Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, episode 5 of SSTO Space Program. Well, you guys keep telling me that I sound like a text-to-speech, so I decided to take things one step further and become one for real. I hope you like it, because I do. Today is an exciting day, because we will be building a lot of SSTO space planes and we will start building our first space station. Even better, I will show you exactly how I design and build my SSTOs and give you all the tools you need to become an SSTO expert yourself. So let's jump right into it. First, let's pick all of the important technologies that we need and we want rapier engines, obviously. With all the science that we've got from our Minmus mission, we can unlock almost everything we need, from engines to fuel tanks, pets and antennas, science equipment and docking ports. Upgrading the R&D department to level 3 left us pretty broke, but luckily enough, there are plenty of stranded Kerbals that we can rescue and get paid for it. We'll also get new Kerbonauts for our space program, who will have some interesting traits, as you will see. For uh, the first orbital rescue mission, I chose a new SSTO that I've been working on recently, because quite frankly, I wanted to show it to you, because I think that it looks awesome. It has around 1000 delta V while in orbit, so can go up to geostationary orbit and back, which makes it a neat crew transport. It's uh, still work in progress, but I'm really happy with the initial design and hopefully expand this line into more capable variants. This SSTO is fun to fly and gets into orbit really easily, so make sure to check it out. The link, as usual, is in the description. Our first stranded Kerbal was Elok Kerman, who was apparently left inside an observation cupola, a part that comes with USI lab support. What is really interesting about that part is that it has no hatch, so there is no way for Elok to leave his prison. I haven't researched the claw yet, so there is nothing I can do to save him with this SSTO. We need to bring in some cargo to do so, and I have a couple of ideas, but first we need a new SSTO. One that has a cargo bay. So here is the interesting bit. How do you design an SSTO? So I made a handy script to help me out with that, but for you I prepared this Excel spreadsheet that you can see right now, that has very similar functionality. All you need to do is type in your desired cargo plus mass of the utilities like cockpit, crew cabins and that sort of thing. Then type in the desired velocities for each engine type mode. Uh, so one for jet, one for rocket and one for nuclear if you're going to use it. And then balance the fuel in each mode that will be row 3 to match the desired velocities with the output you can see in row 12. Once you are close, you have the basic data for your new SSTO. One thing to keep in mind though, try to stick to 3500 meters per second in jet mode for Kerbin SSTOs and make sure that your stationary thrust to weight ratio in said mode doesn't drop below 0.51, otherwise getting into orbit might not be so easy. At this point you can jump into the space plane hangar and start building. Make sure that the total mass of your vessel is as close as possible to what you have estimated, otherwise tweak the extra mass in the spreadsheet to match it. As usual, make sure that the sensor of mass of your vessel is always in front of your sensor of lift. This SSTO that we're building has very high thrust to weight ratio in every mode, so flying it won't be a problem. It can carry up to one ton of cargo into high cabin orbit, precisely what we need to save a lock. I decided to take some screwdrivers and pipe ports with me as well as some probe core, a battery, a small fuel tank and a spark engine. Well, everything to build a small rocket really. My idea was that if Elok can't leave, we will deorbit his cupola and land him on Kerbin safely. Everything is ready, so off we go. I was about to use Kerbal attachment system for the first time, so I wasn't sure if everything is going to work. The pipe ports that we had in the crew cabins were supposed to be the last resort. If everything else fails, I wanted to attach them to our ship and the cupola and transfer Elok to the ship directly. It is a bit stupid, but I saw it's possible. I would prefer building a proper rocket and landing it, however. So about our design, I think this SSTO flies well and it turned out pretty great looking as well. Upon arrival, I realized two things. It was possible to construct a small rocket in orbit using Kerbal attachment system, but the part Elok was stuck in doesn't allow surface attachment, so we cannot connect our two vessels together using pipes. It also has only one attachment node, so there is no way we can attach an engine and a heat shield to it, not to mention the parachute. So I hope he is a brave Kerbal, because he will be landing SpaceX style, and with no protection. I deorbited the rocket using 3 quarters of the fuel, to avoid any surprises during re-entry. It didn't burn up, so that's good, but uh, it has no parachute, so I was really hoping we can land it vertically. 
There was a moment of fear when it flipped over while flying close to the ground, but luckily I've installed a reaction wheel that could counter it. During landing we've lost only the engine which, all things considered, I think was a success. We were left with deorbiting our new SSTO and that worked really well, I, I'm getting better at this, although it was a bit nose heavy at times. We had a lot of fuel left so we could bring it back and land on the runway easily. I added some canards to improve maneuverability and put a contract satellite into the cargo bay that will send to the moon and we were off saving another Kerbal, this time from high carbon orbit. We will be saving a lot of Kerbals today. Back on the runway with those canards our SSTO takes off really easily while still being stable. I must say I absolutely love the look on this one, since it's using Mark 1 cockpit and crew cabin it has lower heat resistance than my other SSTOs but should work well for carbon missions. Since we have almost 1000 meter per second delta V, reaching high carbon orbit and rescuing um I think Deb Shell Kerman was not a problem, in the meantime our satellite went to the moon to perform requested temperature scans. Our next stranded mishap was in a very high orbit around Kerbin, too high for our current design. It was a perfect excuse to build yet another SSTO. This time we will build an SSTO that can go to the moon and back with some small cargo. We need at least 3200 meters per second while in orbit for this. My design was made for 6 Kerbals and 2 ton cargo capacity, because now we need to carry all that food for them. So pretty much like the SSTO from my tutorial. I didn't want to use the exact same design, mainly to show you that building such an SSTO is not a big deal, you can reverse engineer it now using the Excel spreadsheet we talked about earlier. Also at this point I wanted to mention a really cool trick I learned from Veos Human. If you place something like an antenna or a battery where your center of lift is and uh, another thing at where your center of mass is, you will be able to easily find them while in flight and correct for any potential stability issues since the default camera is always centered on the vessel's center of mass. Be sure to check out Veyo's channel by the way, he has some great stuff. I packed quite a lot of supplies into the cargo bay and some science instruments mainly to see how this design will perform in flight. I also spent quite a lot of time working on the wings because I wanted them to look good because as famous YouTuber Robas said, if something looks good it performs good and I want this SSTO to be amazing. And we're off. It takes off really easily thanks to large wing area and the fact that the sense of lift is very close to the center of mass. Having those front cannons helps lift the nose as well. It doesn't have a lot of thrust, but nevertheless climbs easily. On a side note, KSP still applies drag to objects that are inside a cargo bay, so it might happen that a particularly difficult cargo, while still being well within mass limit, will make your trip to orbit much less straightforward. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, Free Doctor E Free, who was kind enough to share his config files with me, and thanks to that we can enjoy this beautiful particle effect, skybox and amazing window reflections. Getting into orbit and high orbit is a non-issue, even with relatively low thrust to weight ratio we have on this ship. After we rescued our brave carbonaut, we were almost ready to go to the moon. Almost because there is one more thing I would like to do. And that is obviously a research space station around Kerbin. We have docking ports now, so we can just put a core of the station and expand it later. We will need to build a cargo SSTO for this. So, let's jump right into the space plane hangar and start building. I wanted to make a relatively small Mark III SSTO with cargo capacity of 20 tons, so total extra mass is around 35 tons if you want to reverse engineer it yourself, that we will use for orbital construction. It's going to use only rapier engines and will give it enough delta V to get into a, a 120 km circular orbit around Kerbin with some extra margin. As for our space station, I started with just the laboratory, a habitat and some supplies and assigned three new reacquired Kerbals to man the station. Hitchhikers can and stock laboratory have all built-in habitat and life support modules, so our Kerbals should be relatively safe and sound inside. Before takeoff, I checked what was the exact hub and food expectancy we were getting and we were off. I uh, still don't really understand how it works, especially with the uh, habitation and homesickness, because those values evolve over time, as you will see. Suffice to say that we started with uh, 100 days of hub time that evolved um, over time to 220 days after our station was put in orbit and the SSTO departed. 
regarding our new SSTO, it performs well. Climbs easily, it's very agile considering its size and got into orbit with lots of spare fuel. Well, uh, I guess it's another successful design. After reaching a nice circular orbit around Kerbin, our station was deployed and activated. If you pay close attention, you will see that one of the docking ports didn't attach to the station, but instead was attached to the cargo bay of our SSTO. It's something that we will have to correct for later. I am really happy we have KS installed, it makes uh, such small tweaks and repairs so much easier. Initially we will use this station to get extra science from research and once expanded probably for um, refueling missions and some manufacturing. Right now it looks all good and we can deorbit our new cargo SSCO and land it back at the KSC. This is always a bit stressful because even with everything designed and planned for as good as possible, KSP likes to behave in an unforeseen way. I still don't have a name for this SSTO, so if you guys have any suggestions please leave them in the comments below. Um, Re-entering this craft went well and it was stable, so no surprises there, but I did a horrible job at landing. Not my proudest moment. But nevertheless we've landed, so I guess you can consider this a success, I uh, guess. Now we have everything we need to send our new Angel SSTO to the moon and rescue Kerbal stranded there. I've packed quite a lot of stuff into the cargo bay. Science instruments, especially newly acquired gravity detector, lots of supplies, batteries and surface scanning satellites that we will use to pave the road for future colonization missions. The cargo was well within mass limit, but all of those small objects created extra drag and that actually made it a little bit harder to get to orbit. Well, we made it anyway, with just enough fuel to land on the moon, if we deployed our satellite now, but since we are going to do a lot of orbital maneuvering around the moon, to get to those stranded kerbals obviously, I don't think we'll have enough to land anyway. So um, this time it's not a big deal, because we can always relaunch this mission later on and land on the moon whenever we want to, and this is actually the beauty of reusability. Uh, getting anywhere is only the fuel and fuel in KSP is really really cheap. Initially there were only two stranded kerbals in the Munar orbit, but during the course of our mission another two popped up and upon arrival we had a total of four stranded kerbal to rescue. Good that our crew cabin had some extra room in it. Once we've got to the moon we needed to burn retrograde to insert our vessel into an orbit around the moon and I purposefully decided to set my perigee at around 140 km above the moon in order to establish a transfer orbit more easily. Since three of those four stranded kerbals were in a very similar low circular orbit it was just a matter of sitting there until we got an encounter with one of them. Once he was safe and sound in our crew cabin, I raised the apogee again to get an encounter with another one and so on until all three were sitting back in our comfy crew module. Now, there are some interesting bits to this story. First, the hub and home timers for Kerbals back on the space station was for some reason raised to over 223 days. I mean, that's great, but I would like to know exactly why it happened and how can I plan this? Otherwise sending a manned mission to Duna or Eve might be um, a bit difficult. Second, those rescued Kerbals had uh, all sorts of interesting specialties. One was a quartermaster, one, uh, another one was a bi biologist and uh, yet another one was a colonist. I have no idea what they do exactly, but apparently MKS introduces all sorts of different Kerbal types now, such as medics, mechanics, farmers and so on. And uh, I thought MKS was complicated before, and now it looks like we're playing Planet Base on steroids. Our last Kerbal to be rescued was in a higher and slightly inclined orbit, so we needed to raise our, um, well, not Apogee, as I was saying incorrectly before, but what would that be? Um, Upper uh, whatever that is, uh, we needed to raise it to get an encounter and uh, that required a little bit of tweaking and careful planning but was eventually done. When I was planning this mission I didn't pack enough supplies for six Kerbals because initially as you remember we had only two to rescue um, so I was a bit worried that they might end up getting hungry before it's all over especially since I wanted to go to our new space station before landing. And the reason to go there was obviously for science and uh, to be precise I was collecting gravity data from around the moon throughout the mission and I wanted to leave some of that data for processing in our newly built orbital research lab. 
We still have way more than enough fuel to get back to Kerbin and do some maneuvering in orbit because this ship was designed to land on the moon and uh, we just used a relatively small amount of pre-allocated 1200 meters per second that we would need for landing for orbital maneuvers around the moon. So uh, we made it back with lots of fuel and after two aero brakes and some correction burns I was able to put the spacecraft in uh, an orbit that would allow us to get an encounter with our new station. I used up all of the monopropellant that we had so um, docking was not an option uh, because I'm not Scott Manley and I can't dock with just calculated engine burns. Maybe someday but not now. I sent Bob to transfer some of the data to the station and check on our Kerbal staying there. Um, everything looked okay, so after he was back it was time to deorbit our SSTO and land back at the KSC. I think it was a pretty successful day. We've um, got three new space planes, a new space station and six new Kerbals. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed and if you did please give this video a like and leave a comment below and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider doing so. I'm Mark Frim and I'll see you next time. Cheers!